All right, well, this is just a battery backup, and I know it's an awkward shot to begin. It's because I've got this thing charging in the floor. I wanted to make sure it was all topped up before I install it. So this is the CP1500 PFC RM2U. So that is a 1500 VA power factor correction rack mount two unit uh, un uninterruptible power supply. Um, and so I've just been, like I said, having it charge up here before I install it. And I also wanted to do a little bit of uh, monitoring because I've used some UPS systems before that draw a ton of power, even when they're not doing any sort of backup or charging, just sitting. Some of my trip light stuff draws like 20 watts or more at idle. And so with this one, had it plugged in for a few days, it did have to charge up, but after it charged up, the power has really, really, really fallen off and it stayed down around four watts for like a day. And, and basically in the last day, it's even dropped down to basically three watts at idle. So it, it seems to be a, a very efficient idle power draw device, which I, I find important because if this thing was drawn like my other ones at like 20 watts, and I'm putting it on a server, which only draws about 110 to 120 watts, uh, you know, you, you're adding an extra 20% to your power budget just for nothing other than safety, which, you know, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. But for me, it, you know, I wanted to find a little bit more efficient option, and this is what I've gone with. So let me get this thing installed, and then I'm going to get it set up in Proxmox and try to get it also set up in Home Assistant so that it will automatically shut down my system and send me good uh, notifications to my email and on my phone and everything else. So just gonna go throw this in my rack. All right, so I have battery backup installed into the server rack and here you can see kind of what I've got going on in here. Uh, top of the rack, that is my Unify Dream Machine Pro SE or something like that. Uh, below that would be the 10 gigabit SFP plus router. It's a micro tick, micro tick, uh, cloud router switch. Then there's the server and then there you've got the UPS system. Um, so I've got power monitoring on most stuff so I can kind of see, you know, what's going on in there. But next up, I need to get software set up on the server to monitor the UPS to trigger you know, shut down whenever the battery gets low. And then I also want to try to integrate this thing into Home Assistant. And hopefully by the end of all this, I'll be able to do good monitoring of the UPS and safe shutdown. And it should send me alerts if there are power outages and all kinds of good stuff. So let's go over to the computer and get it set up. All right, so I'm about to install NUT or Network UPS Tools. So NUT is just a piece of software that, again, by its name, is just here to help us manage uh, uninterruptible power supplies, right? And it's pretty common for this to be used with Proxmox as the method that people use to trigger their shutdowns and send updates and all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm going to be following a tutorial from CreaWeb. Um, and so this is basically designed to give you a generic installation of NUT on Proxmox and, you know, get your UPS set up in a basic way. So the first thing we need to do is identify what USB port we've got our UPS on. If I do LS USB. And so here you can see the cyber power system is on bus one device eight. All right. So there we go. Then we can see more about it by doing lsusb-v-s, and then it'll be uh, one eight, because I am on bus one, device eight. And so that gives me details of the device. You can see the vendor cyber power. There's the uh, product name uh, right there. I've got my serial, which I will block out so that you can't steal my stuff. All right. So next up, we're going to install NUT. So this is just a, a regular piece of software that you should be able to find in the repository. So if I just do a uh, apt install NUT, there you go. All right, so NUT's installed. We're going to do a NUT scanner dash big U. Okay, and so there you go. It has found the CyberPower 
UPS. And again, I'm going to have to block my serial out there. Next up in the tutorial is to set up the configuration. And nice thing, he's already got the commands here. So we're going to back up the default configuration file to a different file and then edit with nano. So Okay, found uh, an error. So in my configuration, it is important. Uh, basically, these overrides, there's some things uh, apparently on the CyberPower that, that don't edit well. And changing the battery uh, low charge. So basically, so changing the, uh, the low charge state, right? I, I can't change that very well through the command line. And then the low runtime. Uh, those alerts uh, I can't set as easily through the command line. So these overrides get added into the UPS configuration file, and that should be how that works. And that interacts with this ignore low battery command. And so basically this says ignore what the UPS says, override these values, and use these instead. So uh, that was important because apparently what I was trying to do uh, just just wasn't going to work. So this turns out to be the solution. So what I was trying to do by editing those via command line uh, instructions just wasn't ever going to work. Have to have these overrides. So with that, I think everything is set up in Proxmox. Now I can go into Home Assistant and get Nut set up there so that I can get notifications and stuff. By the way, uh, just to confirm, you can see out here, I've got all the like default settings showing up from the UPS. I've got full communications. Everything should be being reported. And so again, we're done with Proxmox and gonna go over into Home Assistant. All right, so in Home Assistant, I need to add Nut. So Network UPS Tools. Okay, so I had to give it the IP address and I use the UPS admin login. There's my device name. Put this in the server closet, hit finish. And I now have my device and you can see showing up in Home Assistant. Uh, this makes it really easy. Basically, there you go, gives me battery charge, input voltage, load, output, online. And then a bunch of disabled stuff that I believe I can enable this stuff. So if I click this and enable, and yeah, it took just a little bit for these to pop in, but yeah, these extra diagnostics are things that are available within, you know, the nut system um, that aren't actually, you know, pulled in by default. You can see a bunch of them disabled, but all you got to do is come in here. And again, you click on one, come up here to the little gear and hit enable, and it, it will enable these things if you want these extra things. And so if you're curious about what all you can do with this, well, if you look at the, the nut add in in home assistant, it, it shows you like all the things that get pulled out of this and what they mean. And, and probably some of the most important stuff are the, are the sensor data. And so you can condition different things in Home Assistant on the status and the status data. And so what I would like to do is take this status variable and I want to create an automation such that anytime the status changes, it sends me a push notification on my phone that tells me the new status. And, and that should basically tell me, hey, if this thing goes offline, if it goes into alarm state or anything like that, that's what I'm gonna watch. All right, so I'm gonna add an automation. Let's do... So I've got my automation set up so that it's when the status changes. And so basically you don't have to enter anything here. You just say, hey, look at this entity for the status. And basically any time that changes, it's going to trigger this automation. And then down at the bottom, I'm going to just push a notification to my mobile phone, which I've got a Pixel 9 Pro XL. And here's what I've got to do. The message is going to read this, right? UPS status change to. And then this is the code that's basically going to pull in whatever the new value 
And actually, that needs to be cyber power. W, there we go, cyber power status. All right, so it's going to pull in the, the sensor status that updated, and that's what it should push to my phone. Um, let's save this as UPS status change notification. Hit save. And I can run it. And yep, I got a notification from the Home Assistant app on my phone. And so now with that, I've got Nut set up on Proxmox. I have Nut pulling in that data to my Home Assistant. And now it will push a notification uh, to my phone. Now this is all dependent on things staying up because if the UPS actually has a hard failure and I lose full power, uh, the server will also go down and the server is running Home Assistant. So this is not the most independent monitoring of the UPS because I'm having devices that the UPS powers notify me of the state of the UPS. But um, it, it's what I got and I think it's going to be good enough for me. So that uh, that's going to be all there is to this video. It, it's pretty straightforward. Just getting it set up in Proxmox took a little bit. But if you follow the tutorial that I talked about, it kind of walks you through it and there's very minimal uh, changes that you have to have. Otherwise, it does the changes that you have to make are very dependent on what UPS you use. And since I was using CyberPower, I had to make a couple edits. If you're using an APC uh, brand UPS, I imagine you just follow that tutorial and there's nothing else you really have to do. Getting it set up in Home Assistant is dirt simple. There is nothing to do. You literally just, you know, get your IP, remember your login, and then it just automatically pulls this stuff in. Um, and then getting this little automation set up. Now I'll show you, uh, I do have some power data because I like to monitor power on all my stuff. Um, here you can see the server power power. Uh, that's just a, a naming thing. Uh, this is the total server power that's running through the UPS and pulling from the wall. So this is like everything out of the wall. I'm currently pulling uh, 110 watts. Of that, 43 watts is the server itself. Uh, I've got 58 watts for my switch. And so uh, this also, by the way, is so high because it's also powering multiple PoE devices like uh, my security cameras and my Wi-Fi uh, access points. So it, it will get up to maybe 70 to 75 watts at night whenever all my cameras turn on uh, their uh, LEDs, basically the, the infrared stuff for the cameras, but uh, the whole thing basically maxes out about 115. The only thing that is not captured by either on the UDM or uh, my server is the switch, the, the fiber switch. Um, that is caught in the server power, so that does catch everything. Anyway, uh, that just shows you, hey, yep, this is the total UPS load. I guess some, some weird stuff. Uh, there, let me show you today because I just got this thing plugged in. So I've had this thing plugged in since about noon and you can see like right when I plugged, plugged it in, it, it pulled a little bit of power as everything kind of booted up and that ran some stuff. The UPS, I, what I've found is that it does draw only about three watts at idle. And so you can see back here, I had the UPS plugged in for a while, like a whole day before I actually plugged everything into it because I wanted to do a little bit of uh, power impact on the UPS. Again, I wanted to get a very low idle draw UPS system. And you can see it was pulling about three watts here. And then once plugged everything in, you know, it's up to, you know, 115. And then it, it dropped down a little bit after kind of everything starts to settle in. The power actually declines after a while um, just because... Uh, hard drives turn off. Um, the UPS kind of charges itself a little bit, and then once it settles in, so you can see I'm, I'm running, you know, 110 to 115 is kind of the idle power draw of the entire closet. So that's what I got going right now. Um, got the UPS set up, and I'm happy right now. So we'll see what happens next time the power blinks if everything works like expected. 
uh, and I will you know try to remember to update maybe with a comment uh, if anything goes wrong. So if you got any questions, comments, feedback, as always, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks.